Hello everyone, I am Roseto Dorquista and this is Introduction to Computing. So today we will be talking about a computer organization. So representing and storing numbers for the basic uh, of operation were the basic of operation of the computers in the earlier times and uh, the real go came on computation or manipulating numbers like adding multiplying came into pictures um, these operations are handled by the computer's arithmetic logic unit or the ELU so if you can remember uh, the first computer uh, the, the main purpose of the main computer the uh, Abacus, so that that is the undisputed as uh, first computer uh, that is ever made. So the, the main purpose of that uh, computing device or the the Abacus is to perform computations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and um, and then the ELU is a digital uh, circuit that provides arithmetic and logic operation. It is the fundamental building block of central processing unit of a computer. So, most of the operations are performed by one or more ALUs, which load data from input register. And then, registers are the small amount of storage available in the CPU. If you can still remember, we talk about uh, in the other videos that I uploaded in this channel. We talk about or I talk about the registers. Uh, it is uh, the the level one the level one cache memory it is being uh, integrated in a central processing unit so it is not just in a separate chip but it, it is within the central processing unit chip so this register registers can be accessed very fast and uh, the control unit tells ALU what uh, operation to perform on the available data and then after calculation manipulation the ALU stores the output in an output register So, if you can see this, uh, if you look at this uh, uh, diagram, so from the other side we have the input device, and then on the other side also we have the output device, and the box in the center is your central processing unit. So the central processing unit is uh, composed of three parts. We have, or the, it has. A uh, three organizations so the it has arithmetic logic unit it has control unit and the set of registers and let me uh, the examples of uh, input devices are those devices that uh, give instruction to the computer or give information to the computer uh, let's say for example a keyboard a mouse uh, this microphone uh, that camera uh, that uh, yeah webcam web camera this digital pin uh, what else and the some example of the output device are the computer monitor um, speakers printer so those are examples of um, output devices so before you can uh, observe or uh, see or before the computer displays in your computer monitor the output of the process uh, first the computer needs an input so this input will be processed inside your central processing unit it will be uh, it will use control unit the set of registers the arithmetic logic unit to perform simple to complex operation now say for example one plus one two plus and and more on complex operations like uh, register on uh, a system uh, manipulating an inventory system so or printing documents so yeah let's go forward so the CPU can be divided into two sections so there are two sections of uh, central processing unit the first section is the data, data section and the control section then the data section is also known as data path so if we have control section or the data section we have uh, the data section is also called data path then with this uh, section of the computer 
we have this thing called bus so, so in the in the early computers bus were parallel electrical wires with multiple hardware connections so if you can still picture out or remember the 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 first computer created by uh, charles babbage so it has many electrical wires connected to one physical uh, hardware to another physical hardware so so uh, therefore a bus is a communication system that transfers data between component inside a computer so or between computers like qtp cables uh, cat 6 cat 5 so it includes hardware components like wires optical fibers etc and software so we could also create a software that will be sending or receive transmission data or information from other computer so let's for example uh, Yahoo Messenger, a local messenger. So, net message. Uh, this regist uh, the registers ALU and the interconnecting bus are collectively referred as data path. So, the registers, the ALU, and the interconnecting bus are collectively referred as data path because those are the organizations that holds the 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 data from input to process to output okay and this bus has at least four types so the first one is the address bus so the purpose of this address bus is to hold uh, the it serves as the header it, it 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 holds the information or the address of the resources that is needed for the operation in the ALU or the arithmetic logic unit and then the data bus or the second uh, type of bus is the, the one that holds the actual data from address bus address bus and data bus goes hand in hand because while the address bus um, keep track on the, the actual location or the address of those data data bus is the one that uh, holds the information or the actual data that is needed for the operation and we have control bus uh, if the bus is carrying control signals so control signals like flag error flag or if there is no um, data found in this specific address or in this specific location so the control bus will will uh, execute or it will throw out an exception error so this uh, the purpose of control bus and then we have the power bus so if this is, it is carrying clock poles power signals it is known as power bus and so on so you might think of um, an example of power bus is that uh, like for example we could light a, a bulb we could light a fluorescent we could light a, a lighting from of a certain room using uh, just an enter key from the keyboard so those instructions should be instructed by the central processing unit but to be able to do that you have to link your computer to an, uh, an outside device like uh, a board that will control the the switch on and off of a bulb or a fluorescent then the bus can be de dedicated it can be used for a single purpose or it can be multiplex so it can be used for multiple purpose when we sh uh, when we would have different kinds of buses so different types of bus organizations will take place so one of this uh, type of organ uh, bus organization is the program uh, counter so the program counter is a CPU registered in the computer processor which has the address of the next instruction so you can uh, you can imagine this program counter as a stack so it has a, uh, a stack yeah uh, if you know what a stack is uh, it the program counter since the program counter holds the the number of instructions that needed to be executed the number of instructions so if you have instruction one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, and so on and so forth so along this number or those accounts uh, the the one responsible that that is uh, in charge for counting the the first the next the next the next and to the last uh, instruction is the program counter and the next second one is instruction register so if we have an organization that holds the actual number of uh, operations uh, 
to be performed then those instructions are not stored in program counter but it is being st stored in instruction register so in computing an instruction register or IR is a part of the CPU control unit that holds then uh, the instruction currently being executed or decoded so an instruction register as a part of the CPU control unit that holds instruction currently being executed or decoded instruction register specifically holds the instruction and provides it to the instruction decoder circuit so if we have a counter then we have an, a register that holds the actual instruction for the process um, it's not enough to just have a counter for the processes on uh, inside the central processing unit or just the instruction register where in the actual instruction or for the performance is stored we need a memory address register so the memory address, address register the main purpose of this register is to keep track of the uh, location of the actual data or information that is needed for the operation in the ALU so the memory register is um, much like the, the header if you can still remember uh, the uh, when I when we talk about the memory, the types of memory, the memory location, where I draw a which I draw a uh, an Excel like table. It has columns and rows, and above those columns are the alphabet letters, and on the side is the the number uh, from one up to whatever the number is, or the last number. So. Those, let's, for example, if we read on cell 1 is the, the the header that points on cell 1 or cell 2. So, for example, on cell 2 is uh, A1 or A2. So, if it is cell 2, it is A2. If it is cell 1, it is A1. So, the one that holds or keep track those A1 and A2 is the memory address register. So, it is the one that knows where to find those resources when it is needed in the... Um, ALU uh, in the central processing unit uh, computation so along with address register so it's not enough to have just uh, the, the header or the address that locates the where the data or information is being stored we should or the uh, computer organization must have a memory data register now the purpose of this is to hold the actual data that is needed for the operation so if we had the address that locates where the location of those resources are so the memory data register is serves as the buffer so it will hold it will uh, like uh, get all those uh, data and information that is needed for the operation so it is the, the task the rule of memory data register it holds the the resources the data that is uh, pointed out by the memory address register so the mer and the mdr works hand in hand and then we have this general purpose register so the per, uh, the, the main reason we have this is to give flexibility to a programmer or the computer alone itself to to store or to retrieve uh, a data more faster than the other uh, machine so general purpose registers are used to store temporary data within the micro microprocessor so it is the multi-purpose register they can be used either by the programmer or by the user So if you can, uh, if you look at this uh, diagram, so this is uh, the representation of, this is a representation of a one bus organization. So there are different types of buses. There are different kinds of uh, bus organization inside our central processing unit or the computing, our computer system. So as you can see in this picture, we have bus one on the upper part so we have here that is your main bus and then this is the general purpose re register uh, a free register which could be used by a programmer or a, a certain application in your uh, computer and then we have the pc the program counter the one that counts the how many instructions are to be executed uh, which is the first the second and up to the last uh, uh, instruction and along with this instruction uh, 
uh, program counter rather we have the instruction register so program counter is the, the main task of program counter is just to count just to count the the actual number of processes or the steps that needed to be done in the ALU or the arithmetic logic unit so but the actual instruction is not stored in the program counter but in the uh, IR or instruction register and along with this instruction register so for example the instruction is a sum two numbers one and two uh, or three and four sum the three and four numbers so it will be the task now of the MER or the memory address register to find uh, to keep track of those uh, first value and second value for the addition so where it is located maybe it is in your uh, general purpose register or it is in the, your cache L1, L2, L3 or on the other part of uh, the other storage of the computer so but MAR or memory address register is um, not enough it should work with MDR or mem memory, da uh, memory data register so as you can see the MDR and MER is uh, connected by a memory bus a single memory bus it is because if it's just uh, the MER or the header it's not enough so you have to not just point the resource or the data but you should provide the actual data so that is the task now of the MDR it holds the resources or the information that is needed for the operation in your ALU so MER and MDR works hand in hand and then if that uh, instruction is being executed uh, like for example the SAM A and SAM B so those um, resources will be stored here and then the ELU or the arithmetic logic will perform the operation and produce the output on bus 1 but bus 1 is too slow for a computer to perform uh, instructions simultaneously and the registers are limited it is those are just uh, it holds on this small capacity of uh, cache memory or space for uh, competition so with that in, in mind the engineers of computer or computing machine develops the um, a new bus which, which has uh, so for example it has a two bus or uh, not just one bus so, so if you look at the the diagram as you can see with the diagram here we have bus 1 at the top and then we have bus 2 down below we have N bus and the last one is the out bus So in this case, uh, program counter counts the or manage the execution, the step by step execution of a an instruction. Those instructions are stored in your IR, and the resources needed for this operation by the ALU, as it is stored in your um, instruction register, maybe it needs resources, so it has the MAR and the MDR where MAR holds the address the MDR holds the data so that is why this 2 is connected by a, a memory bus a single memory bus because it's not just enough to have the address but it is very important to also uh, not just locate but uh, give or produce the resources that is needed for the operation so as you can see in this diagram we have two pieces we have two IR we also have two MAR or MAR we, and then we have MDR or the memory data register so compared to the previous uh, bus organization that is a one bus organization this one clearly as you can see uh, could perform better than the uh, one bus organization so because this one has two arithmetic logic units so it could perform uh, different tasks at the same time and then the storage for PC, IR, MER and MDR becomes uh, much more uh, spacious or it has more space for a computation than the one bus organization
So another example is this one, the bus one, and then it has. Uh, so on the upper part, uh, on the upper part we have bus one, and on the lower part we have output bus on one and output bus two. So still it has the general purpose register it has the program counter the instruction register the memory address register and the memory data register and still the mer and mdr is connected by a single memory bus so this is your alu here so we could uh, put this imagination as an example like you have two monitor and one computer so it could be that uh, the output of uh, bus one or computer one, um, computer monitor one is the same with the output in your computer monitor two or shall we say you have a laptop so and it is connected in a projector so whatever the content that is being shown on your laptop monitor screen will be also uh, reflected on the on the projects projector so that is a, a, a simple uh, representation example of uh, computer organization of an example of um, bus organization a two bus organization and then with this uh, upgrade or uh, latest generation of having not just one uh, bus organization but as much as you you, you want mm -hmm. The advantages of the this is uh, could be increased size in size of register it could uh, re reduce the number of cycles for execution because it will uh, if you have only one bus it will perform the, the same action repeatedly in one bus but if you have multiple bus organization it might uh, simultaneously work on the the execution of uh, instruction so that's far more better or faster and if you think about it it is faster than the one bus organization and it has a lot more storage because uh, as you can see in this example it has two pc it has two ir mer mdr so probably another example for this is having the high speaks computer which has uh, not just one central processing unit so if you can uh, remember the old uh, the old times the computer could only perform one action at a time let's for example you are uh, using lotus you encoded text and you cannot open another application like listening to music uh, opening your browser browse to youtube and uh, that's not uh, the computer in the old times could not able to do that maybe because of this uh, single bus organization but in in the later version so it's not just in about the the increasing number of registers it also reduced the number of cycle for execution so much later time uh, lesser time to perform instructions it becomes more a powerful computing device and also it increases the speed of execution or we can say faster than faster execution than the other computer so that is the, the advantage of having uh, multiple bus organization and that's it for today for the computer organization so i hope you have learned something from me I, if you have uh, questions and clarifications please comment down below you can ask me questions or you can text me using my phone number you can uh, send a message to my um, gmail account and then please don't forget to like this video uh, click on the subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell so that you will be updated on the next discussion which uh, regards to introduction to computing or other related uh, subjects within the information communications technology and um, that's all for today thank you for listening to you and mabuhay